Good evening, I'm John Carter. Welcome to Poland Daily. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has said that he's expecting the European Commission and Poland to reach a compromise regarding the Polish judicial reform by next week. The leader of the ruling Law and Justice Party, Jarosław Kaczyński, stated in an interview that it is imperative that the two sides finally settle the issue. I will not deny that the price will be high, but I will admit that we are following the path set out by the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban. He also realized that some concessions have to be made in order to continue moving forward. I would of course prefer this not to be the case and that we would be able to implement our reforms in their entirety. The EU will start its discussion on the coming reform of the Union. Poland is set for regional elections this fall. Therefore, both sides have incentives to reach a compromise. It is simply in the interest of both parties involved. Politicians from the liberal opposition parties argue that the announced concessions are just smoke and mirrors and that they effects of the judicial reform cannot be undone at this stage. The ruling party is trying to give the impression that they are ready to give concessions in order to reach a compromise. In reality, there will be no concessions. They have demolished the entire court system, and now they say that they will take a step back. It is obvious that there will be nothing but cosmetic concessions. According to the leader of the ruling Law and Justice Party, the concessions will not go far enough to endanger the sense of implementing the judicial reform. It's important that there is a possibility of a compromise ahead of us. I hope that our willingness to give concessions in order to reach an agreement will not be interpreted by the Polish opposition parties as an invitation to continue their attacks against Poland on the international stage. The Polish government has shown that it is ready to take a step back in order to allow the European Commission to save face. In the end, the sanctions the Commission has been threatening Poland with would have to be supported unanimously by all EU member states. Hungary and the Baltic states have promised to veto any such attempts. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has put an end to controversy surrounding the financial bonuses for ministers from the previous government. The Prime Minister declared that there will no longer be any bonuses for government officials. More than three months ago, Mateusz Morawiecki replaced Beata Szydło as the new Prime Minister of Poland. Just before the change, ministers under Szydło received financial bonuses. Members of the opposition civic platform argue that the premiums are not only too high, but that they should not have been awarded at all. It seems that the members of the opposing party have forgotten that their officials received much higher bonuses during their time in power, as Polish MEP Ryszard Czarnecki recalls. Bonuses like this were awarded left and right during the rule of civic platform and Polish People's Party, and they were also much higher. He also stressed that due to the arousing concerns, the current government has already taken action to resolve the matter. Prime Minister Morawiecki, by cutting the government administration and getting rid of the bonuses, shows that law and justice can come to the right conclusions and learn from past mistakes. The coalition of Civic Platform and Polish People's Party did not come to these conclusions during their eight years of rule. Jarosław Sechajko of the Cookies 15 party suggests that the bonuses would not be needed if only government officials were paid more. I'm curious how the Prime Minister will resolve the problem of the Vice Minister's salaries. They earn little money working a full-time job and get the other half in bonuses. It shouldn't be like this. We're of the opinion that the Minister should be receiving suitable compensation for his work. Apart from putting an end to awarding bonuses for ministers, Prime Minister Morawiecki announced that he intends to decrease the number of ministers and vice ministers by a quarter over the next three months. The European Parliament has decided to not initiate any disciplinary action against Guy Verhofstadt. The MEP had slanderously accused all 60,000 participants at last year's Polish Independence Day march of being neo-Nazis. 
The Independence Day March is an annual event gathering up to 100,000 conservatives and Polish patriots on the streets of Warsaw. The celebrations of November 11th, the Polish Independence Day, have grown to become the largest conservative event in the Western world. Liberal international media have for years attempted to portray it as an event dominated by racists and neo-Nazis. Guy Verhofstadt, a member of the European Parliament, stated during a debate in the Parliament that he had been horrified by the 60,000 neo-Nazis that had been marching on the streets of Warsaw. Saturday, Mr. President, there were 60,000 fascists marched in, in, in the streets of, uh, of Warsaw. Neo-Nazis. White supremacists. And I'm not talking about Charlottesville in, uh, in America. I'm talking about... Uh, Warsaw. A participant of the march, the disabled Polish-Nigerian patriot Bauer Aondoaka, decided that he would not accept Verhofstadt calling him a neo-Nazi and started the process attempting to strip Verhofstadt of his immunity. The European Parliament has decided that Verhofstadt's comment is protected by his right to free speech and that it will not punish him. However, the Parliament recently decided to remove Richard Czarnecki from the position of Vice President of the European Parliament. He had compared the actions of a fellow Polish MEP to those of the individual Poles who passed on information to the Nazi German authorities during World War II. It seems that the European Parliament picks and chooses when to uphold free speech, depending on whether the controversial statements are made by liberals or conservatives. The Polish Air Force will receive four additional M346 aircraft by 2020. The M346 is the most advanced training aircraft in the world. The Polish Ministry of Defence have the option to purchase a further four by 2022 in a contract that could be totaled over one billion złoty. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm John Carter. Poland Daily returns same time tomorrow. Good night.